Well, we'll have a chance to observe a once-in-a-lifetime event across the area over the next few months or so. It's what's called the T. Corona Borealis Nova. Hope I pronounced those words correctly. In any case, it's a nova. And you're asking me, Chris, what the heck is a nova? Well, in astronomical terms, the nova is basically just a star that suddenly increases in light output, then fades away. It'll appear much brighter in the sky for maybe a few days, a few weeks, and slowly fade back to what it was. And this is pretty rare. It only occurs about every 79 years with this uh, nova in particular. Now, how this occurs, you'll have two stars. Now, stars have different sizes. The sun's actually kind of a mid-sized star. First, you have a white dwarf star. That's actually kind of a dying star that's shrinking down. Then a red giant star. Now, this is a star, red giant usually. It's going toward the end of its life cycle, and usually it expands to a red giant once it burns up most of the fuel inside of it. This will happen to our sun in about 5 billion years from now and eventually swallow and melt the Earth, but we don't have to worry about that in our lifetimes, obviously. And when they pass close to each other, Hydrogen will build up on the red giant star, and it heats up quite a bit, as you can imagine. Now, these usually run about four or 5,000 degrees, but it'll heat up to over 300,000 degrees. That is not a misprint there. 300,000 degrees. It causes a runaway thermonuclear reaction, similar to a meltdown in a re nuclear reactor. However, this time it's going to be fusion and not fission, like it usually is when we get nuclear power. And that lets off an area of energy off of it and matter, and that's the NOVA. I'll show you the animation on that in just a moment. Where's an artist rendering it? That's courtesy of the uh, Goddard Space Flight Center. You can see here's the uh, main star. This is the red giant. And you, and you can see this is the white dwarf star rotating around it. The hydrogen builds up on the surface, and all of a sudden, boom, here's the thermonuclear reaction, and here's the material getting spewed off of this. This is the nova here that we're going to eventually see in the night sky. I'll show you how to view it in just a moment. Well, the next thing you're wondering, obviously, is how do I view this thing? Well, the exact time this occurs is uncertain. They don't know exactly when this nova is going to occur, but Generally, any time between about now and early September, go to NASA's website. They usually do a pretty good job in updating when this is going to occur. Now we go to a dark place away from light pollution. As I said many times before, this is Wyoming. Just go a few miles outside of town. You should have plenty of dark sky. Now you want to find the Milky Way that sticks out like a sore thumb, that white area that appears the galaxy there. And look to the right of that, about 20, 30 degrees. Now you're going to look for a bright uh, yellow, reddish star. That's called Arcturus. One of the brightest stars in the constellation Buddha is also one of the brightest in the night sky. And it doesn't twink, and it, stars twinkle, planets don't. So that's how you can identify it. Now look to the left of that between the two. You might look for a, an arc of stars. It's a constellation called Corona Borealis. That'll be about where it originates from. Now the Nova is going to appear just under the, the uh, constellation. Now normally it has a magnitude of uh, astronomical magnitude of 10. That basically means it's not visible to the naked eye or even a lot of telescopes. When it occurs, there will be a new spot in the sky because it will occur with a magnitude of about minus 1.5, about the same as the North Star, Polaris. Well, if you can get out there, when it happens, you get to see maybe a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Happy stargazing.